Hey, anyway, hiya. Chapter 4, Trigonometry, Graphs and Equations. The mixed exercise, 4J at the end. The second part of number 9, the ones with the squares in it. So it's this one first of all. Squares in it and it's in radians. Now you could change it to degrees, but I'm just going to do it all in radians. First of all, sine squared. Sine squared x means sine x, then square it. If you have to think of the graph of that then, the graph of sine x would look like this, going up to 1, down to negative 1, repeating by 360, or in this case, 2 pi. But the square of it means I've got those values and then I've got to square them. So all the negative ones would end up as positive answers. So the graph would be, obviously it'd have a different curvature to it, slightly, it'd be something like that then. It would be double humped. So that looking for a particular value then, We'd have four values. You need to divide by four a quarter. At a quarter, there should be four answers then on the squared graph. But it'll all take care of itself with the cast diagram and so on. So the first step. Sine squared x equals, take the four across and divide, a quarter. Remember that square's acting on it. Now take the square root. So I've got the square root of a quarter, which is, we'll just put it to the side, plus or minus a half. So x is going to be the inverse sine of plus or minus a half. Now I can't put that into my calculator, but you wouldn't be doing that anyway because you'd like the cast diagram to take care of the sine. So I'm just thinking of a half. But you can put it the calculator if you like, but you should know a half because that's one of those triangles. One, two, root three. You can just think in degrees if you like. That's the 30. That's the 30, 60 triangle. Or if you like, that's the pi upon six, pi upon three triangle. So for this one, the sine, that's this one here, it's going to be pi upon 6. So it's pi upon 6 that I've got that I'm going to put into the cast diagram. And when you think all sine tan cos, this actually says, where is it positive and where is it negative? Everywhere then. It's positive here, it's positive here, and I want negative as well, and I want negative as well. So I've actually got four angles, just like in that first graph. There's going to be four values to this. So x is going to be pi upon 6 in these various positions. Well, the first one's obvious, pi upon 6. Then you think, right, I'm doing it in degrees. That's really messy there. Halfway round would be pi. Since I've got sixths, a whole pi would be 6 upon 6. So what have I got? And I suppose on this side here, when I get back to 0, 2 pi is the same as 12 pi upon 6. Just put them all to 6. So I've got 1 short of it, 5 pi upon 6. 1 beyond it. 7 pi upon 6, and 1 short of the 12, 11 pi upon 6. Those would be the four answers you would have. There, that's E. 9F. Tangent this time, but still a square. I think I'll take that rearranged by putting that up to this side and reading it that way. So I've got 3 tan squared x equals 1. So tan squared x equals a third. Now we're going to do the square, so tan x will be the square root of a third, which I'll just put to the side, plus or minus, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 1 upon root 3, you know, 1, 2's and root 3's. So for this one, I'll put it down anyway, so I should have done it. Inverse tan of plus or minus 1 upon root 3. Again, the plus or minus will be taken care of by the cast diagram, and the 1 upon root 3 doesn't require a calculator, because it's one of those two common triangles, 1, 2, 2 root 3. Now we're in degrees, so that's easy. That's 30, that's 60. And the tangent for 1 to be the opposite is 30 degrees. So we're looking at 30 degrees. And it's the same again. The tangent's to be both positive and negative. Well, that just means it's going to go into all the quadrants, all sine, tan, cos. Tangent positive, tangent negative. It just means it's going to be all positions. So we're going to have 30, 30 short of 180, 30 beyond 100. And 80 and 30 short of 360. So I'm just going to have 30, 30 short of 180, 150, 30 beyond 180, 210, 30, 30 short of 360, 330 degrees. But I was a bit hasty there, it just wants answers up to 180, which means that I don't particularly want those two. So my final answer is just going to be x equals 30 or 150 because x has to be between 0 and 180. We'll just put that with the explanation in. So x is 30 or 150. Right, that was f. g. 
It's got squares in it, but it's also got the one itself. So this is slightly different. There's three terms here, but what you've got is a quadratic. That's a quadratic in cos. Remembering again that cos squared means the cos of it squared. And then what you have is equivalent to saying you've got two lots of something squared minus three lots of something plus one equals zero. And you could do that and go through the factorization if you like, but it's quite clear that that's just the same with the x is a cos t. I'll end up with two brackets with cos t's in it. So assuming it factorizes, of course, first of all, 2 cos squared would have to come from 2 cos times cos. Now I'm going to be lazy, I'm not going to put the degree sign in all the time. I know I should, because without the degree signs it implies its radians. But I know from the context of the question. Then 1 can only be 1 and 1. And I'm looking for the bigger one to be negative. In fact, them both to be negative. And then for these two brackets to multiply to give 0, either this bracket is 0, in which case cos t is equal to 1 upon 2. And if this bracket is equal to 0, that means that cos t is equal to 1. That's the implication from the two brackets. And they're all things that I know. Whenever you've got 1s and zeros and negative 1s, like in this case here, I would just think of the graph. It will tell me the answers. When is the cosine equal to 1? At 0 and at 360. So this part's got solutions. t equals 0 or 360. There, I put the degrees into that part instead. A half. I don't need to do inverse cos of a half. I know that one. A half is one of those triangles, the 1, 2, root 3, so I'll just put that down again. 1, 2, root 3, the 1 must be the 30, that must be the 60. And if the cos is a half, then I'm looking for the one adjacent to the 1, so that's 60. Put it into the appropriate quadrant, so I'm looking at 60 degrees, all sine, tan, cos. The cos is positive, so it's either here or here, in which case I've got 60 or 60 short 300. So for this one, t is either equal to 60 or 300. Those are the two independent sets of answers. Then you just put them all together in numerical order. Zero, no, that was daft. 60, 300, 360. Just double check the 360 because sometimes it might not have the equal to, but 360 is included in the answer, so I'll put that down as well. There we are. And finally, H. Another one. Notice no compound angles, so I'm not bothering with the <coughs> general solutions. But here's another quadratic. A quadratic in sign, because I've got something squared, something on its own, and then just a constant. So this is going to be a case of factorising it. Given that it does factorise, feeling that I'd have to use the formula and be a wee bit annoyed. Well, a 3 at the end can only be a 1 and a 3. Now that could be 4 and a 1 or a 2 and a 2. So it's a case of deciding which one it is. But I've got to get a 4 in the middle. So I can see that I've got 2 3s and 2. So 2 sine z. Again, I'm just putting z. 2 sine z to make 4 z squared. And they're symmetrical, so the 1 and 3 either way around. The plus goes to the larger. That'll be the 6 and then minus the 2 makes the 4. So I've got two solutions. This bracket, if it is 0, means that sine of z must be the opposite, which is 1, then divided by the 2. This bracket, if it's to be 0, means the sine of z must be the opposite, which is negative 3, then divided by 2. Now, sine. Sine can only go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. That's outside the range, so there's no solution. You won't find an angle for which the sine of it can come to more than negative 1 further down. So this part has got no further solution. So there's no solution from that part. This part is the 1s and the 2s again. That's the triangle that you know they seem to be using all the time. 1, 2, root 3. One's opposite the short one, 30, so that must be 60. And I'll use my cast diagram to find the positions for it. Acute angle, first of all. So the sine is 1. So opposite means I've got 30 degrees. The sine is positive, all sine, tan, cos. Well, I put the 30, sine's positive there, sine's positive there. So my angles are z equals 30 or 30 short of 180, which is 150. For those two parts, put them together, I know I've stated it already, means z's going to be 30 degrees or 150 degrees. I know it's not strictly correct, it usually had the degree in that and not the degrees in those parts, but I'll just think I'll get away with that.